I thought I would take a minute to do a quick mini review. You will remember that Djoser, the founder of the Third Dynasty, built his famed step pyramid at Sakharov. This was an upgrade from the earlier mastabas, though mastabas continued to be constructed. In the Fourth Dynasty, the pharaohs moved north to Giza and constructed smooth sided pyramids, including the most famous of all, the Great Pyramid of Giza. The first pharaoh of the Fifth Dynasty constructed his pyramid back south at Saqqara. Also, the second pharaoh of the Fifth Dynasty, Sahur, chose yet a new location to construct his complex, and that would be Abu Ser. The pyramids constructed during the Fifth Dynasty were not up to the same standard that the Fourth Dynasty pharaohs set. There are many reasons for this, but one was the emphasis on the sun god Ra. Many sun temples were built which undoubtedly diverted resources away from pyramid projects. In the previous lecture, we covered the first three pharaohs of the Fifth Dynasty, so we will continue on with the next ruler in chronological order. Little is known about Neferfra, since his reign is believed to have been very short, just two to three years before his untimely death. An amazing statue of the pharaoh was found in his pyramid temple. The statue is made out of pink limestone and was discovered in the 19th century by archaeologists. It was originally lying in several fragments, but has since been reconstructed. Still a significant portion of the statue is missing, including the throne the pharaoh sat on. Following Sahur's example, Neferfra began construction of his pyramid complex at Abu Ser. However, due to the pharaoh's short reign, the pyramid construction was abandoned and hastily converted into a square mastaba. Later on during the New Kingdom period, the monument was periodically stripped of its limestone. Neferfra's mummy was found in the structure, and it was determined he died in his early 20s. Shepsakari ascended to the throne after the death of Neferfra. He is the least understood of the fifth dynasty pharaohs, mainly because the evidence of his reign is very fragmentary. It is also believed that Shepsakari lasted only a few months as pharaoh. His relationship to the other pharaohs in the 5th dynasty is not at all clear, though it has been suggested he may have been the son of Sahur. It was also possible that he was an usurper to the throne, and not even a member of the royal family. His place in the chronological order is also disputed. Some historians place his rule before Neferfra, though some historians now place his reign after Neferfra. Shepsakari is associated with an unfinished pyramid located in North Abu Ser. Because of his extremely short reign, the project was quickly abandoned, probably after just a few months of work. Nuzair Inni ascended to the throne after Shepsakari. After the short reigns of the last two pharaohs, Nuzair is believed to have ruled between 24 and 35 years. As mentioned in the last lecture, the state bureaucracy in the Fifth Dynasty began to grow considerably. This practice continued during Nuzair's reign, as even more titles and offices were created. In fact, so much so that the pharaoh's power slowly weakened as the influence of the state bureaucracy increased. Despite the changes, the pharaoh was still seen as a living god. Nuzair commissioned a mining expedition to the Sinai Peninsula. This allowed for the extraction of important metals such as copper. Turquoise mines were also developed here as well. To facilitate the movement of equipment and materials, a port was used on the Gulf of Suez. The port was equipped with storehouses and living quarters. Similar to his predecessors, Nuzair built a pyramid for himself at Abu Ser. However, Nuzair was faced with an immense problem. He also had to finish work on several unfinished projects, particularly his own father, Neferirkari's pyramid. To accomplish this, Nuzair chose a location very close to his father's structure which allowed the pharaoh to concentrate all of his workers in a single location. Nuzair's pyramid is smaller than his father's. This makes sense because, as I mentioned, he needed to finish several other unfinished projects. He did, however, make use of the valley temple and causeway that had originally been intended for his father's pyramid. Since these structures had not been completed yet, Nuzair simply used them for his own pyramid complex. Here is an artist's rendering of Nuzair's valley temple. It is quite impressive in its own right. The main entrance contained a porch that had two colonnades of four granite columns. You can see here a staircase leading up to a roof terrace. This would have given the visitor a nice view of the surrounding countryside. Here is another artist's rendering of Nuzair's mortuary complex. This is the main courtyard which is surrounded by 16 granite columns. The bases of the columns were decorated to produce the illusion of papyrus growing in water. 
Papyrus was not only used as a writing medium for the Egyptians, but it also had important connections to nature and renewal. Menkahor became pharaoh after the death of Nuzer. Very little is known about his reign since few artifacts dated to his reign have been discovered. Like many pharaohs of the 5th dynasty, he constructed a sun temple dedicated to the Egyptian god Ra. He would be the last to do so. Menkhor also abandoned the royal necropolis of Abu Ser and chose Saqqara as his location. Previously, it was unknown where his tomb was located at Saqqara, but through the process of elimination, Menkhor's pyramid was eventually identified. Almost nothing of the structure remains, so it has been aptly named the Headless Pyramid. Jedkari ascended to the throne after Menkhor died. His reign ushered in new changes to the kingdom. First, unlike other pharaohs in the 5th dynasty, Jedkari did not construct a sun temple. There has been a lot of speculation why the temple was not built, but the rise in the prominence of the god Osiris may have been a reason. Jedkari also made changes to his administration. Previously, the centralized state bureaucracy had grown in size and influence. The pharaohs sought to reduce their power by reducing the influence of lesser administration officials. Also, power was no longer concentrated into one single deputy. Instead, Jedkari appointed three main deputies at the same time, two in Memphis and one in Upper Egypt. The deputy in Upper Egypt maintained his headquarters at Abydos. These reforms reduced the power of the central government and had huge implications going forward into the next dynasty. Also, regional governors, called nomarchs, were given more autonomy and now lived inside their province rather than in the capital, Memphis. Similar to previous pharaohs, Jedkari dispatched expeditions to Sinai. As usual, copper and semi-precious stones were mined and then shipped back. Also, Jedkari likely exploited gold mines in the eastern desert and in Nubia. In fact, the ancient Egyptians referred to Nubia as the land of gold. Jedkari began construction on his pyramid complex in Saqqara. Jedkari also continued work in Abu Ser on Nuzer's tomb. Unas became pharaoh after the death of Jedkari. He was the last pharaoh of the 5th dynasty. His reign oversaw a period of economic decline. The decline saw a lessening of the king's power, while the administration and priesthoods began to grow strong again. This trend would continue into the 6th dynasty of the Old Kingdom time period. The cult of Osiris became even more important during Unas's reign. Similar to Jedkari, Unas did not even bother to construct a sun temple to Ra. That is not to say Ra was still not important. Both gods played important roles in accessing the afterlife. One important innovation found in the Pyramid of Unas is the first appearance of the pyramid texts. These texts are some of the oldest religious texts found in Egypt, and they have survived to this day. These texts contain hundreds of magical spells, which were carved on the walls of the corridors and burial chamber. The spells were intended to help the pharaoh pass through the underworld, and then join up with the sun god Ra, his divine father in the afterlife. Unas built his pyramid on one of the corners of Djoser's step pyramid at Saqqara. Yusurkov's tomb is located on the opposite corner. The pyramid Unas constructed was the smallest pyramid during the Old Kingdom time period. Nonetheless, the pyramid is extremely important because of the discovery of the pyramid texts. We will discuss the 6th dynasty in the next video.